All set? Okay. Um, thanks for joining me here today. The last month has been incredibly emotional for many families who have children with autism, and I understand that. I'm here today so we can move forward together, which is why I'm announcing enhancements to our plan. My parliamentary assistant, Amy Fee, has been an important aspect in all of this. Amy, as a mother of two children with autism, has been a real leader. She's made recommendations to me based on her consultations and her lived experience. I give her full credit for the enhancements that our government for the people will be making to Ontario's autism program. I'm also grateful to Premier Ford. The Premier has listened to Amy and I and the concerns of Ontario families. Thanks to him, Ontario will now spend the most per capita on autism in North America. And that's why we will continue our plan on April 1st to eliminate the wait list of 75% of the children with autism who've been denied support by their Ontario government over the course of the next 18 months. We will do this, as I've mentioned many times, by doubling our investment into diagnostic hubs moving to a childhood budget of up to $140,000 per child until age 18 within a direct funding model, and we will allow parents to choose how they spend it. This is a good plan, it is a fair plan, and it is the right plan. Here's where I will be enhancing the plan. Parents told us that they wanted to spend their childhood budget on private, occupational, and speech and language therapy. We agree. So we'll expand that choice. Parents told us that income testing wasn't a great idea. We've listened, so we'll end that. Parents were right when they said that autism is a spectrum and that there are different needs for children on the spectrum. So for the next few months, I'll take their input to best assess how we better support those with complex needs and provide additional supports for them. And parents of children currently in service have expressed their anxiety over ending the service that they currently have. While we empathize with them, and our priority has been and always will be to eliminate the wait list for the three of, of four children currently without service, I will extend their contracts for an additional six months. Our motivation has been and always will be to ensure all children with autism get a level of support from their Ontario government. I could not, in good conscience, continue to deny 75% of the children as the previous government did. That was unfair, it was unequitable, and it was unsustainable. I believe that our current plan, augmented with the compassionate enhancements we have announced, will not only deliver on our desire to eliminate the wait list, but will better support children with autism and their families. It's fair, equitable, and as importantly, it's sustainable now and into the future. Our government is for the people. We listen, and we will continue to consult. I've said many times that a diagnosis for a family can be heartbreaking, and it can be confusing. It can mean difficult decisions for a family. I understand that there is no silver bullet in solving this issue, and I know this can be a very emotional topic. I remain committed to supporting all Ontario families, as does my parliamentary assistant, Amy Fee, and our Premier, Doug Ford, as well as our entire government for the people. The new Ontario Autism Program, with its enhancements, is the best possible program Ontario can deliver, and it is the only program in the history of this province that will support every single child with autism. Happy to take a few questions before question period.